Live from Fox 35 News, you're watching Good Day Orlando. On the Health Watch this morning, with couples quarantining together, a lot of people are theorizing about a possible baby boom in nine months. But the coronavirus pandemic has created many unknowns for pregnant women, and there are many factors to consider right now. And so we have joining us with more Dr. Mark Trollis with Fertility Care at the IVF Center of Orlando. It is so good to see you this morning. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, it's my pleasure, Danielle. Always, always uh, wonderful to be with you all. You know, this is such an interesting time for a lot of people who may be considering planning a family or who may be pregnant right now. You know, I guess my first question is, should you postpone starting a family right now or getting pregnant because of the coronavirus? Well, that's a powerful question. It really involves a lot of, of counseling with the patient and understanding. You know, knowledge is power. Uh, what we know right now is limited. Uh, fortunately, it doesn't seem like pregnant women are at higher risk of getting the coronavirus and COVID, of course. The, uh, if they do get it, fortunately, a small percentage gets severe respiratory symptoms, about 15%. So the majority of uh, pregnant women are not at risk of getting it, but if they do get it, lower percentage of be being serious. Now, th those pregnant women who are more at risk are those with chronic problems like lung disease, heart disease, diabetes. Pregnancy is an immunocompromised state, which could make them more susceptible, but fortunately they don't seem to be higher than the general population. And if they do get the virus, most of them are asymptomatic. And so would those women then be more susceptible to having a C-section then because they may have some respiratory issues? Not necessarily, no, higher, no, no indication for a higher uh, need for a cesarean section. Another important point is whether baby is at risk. And right yeah. now we're not seeing that clearly. Uh, there, there are some small reports of baby uh, testing positive, but it's not clear as to whether that was, uh, w whether it was a problem with the assays of testing. Babies do not seem to be uh, more susceptible to transmission uh, with delivery, and they seem to be more resistant, fortunately. But breastfeeding, have to be careful. While it's not been shown to be in milk, uh, there could be face-to-face -face transmission because mom is close with baby, so they have to be careful in, in terms of wearing a mask and avoiding that transmission. And what about telehealth visits as opposed to in-office visits for, for pregnant women? Are they just as effective, doctor? Well, a terrific question, Danielle. Uh, there are certain things that can be done through telehealth and other things that obviously require an exam. Uh, examinations, uh, whether it's a public exam or measuring the what we call the fundal height, which is the uh, knowing an idea about how the baby is growing inside. So uh, you can't really be doing telehealth all throughout the pregnancy. And so obstetricians are obviously working very hard yeah. at spacing patients' appointments avoiding uh, can, uh, um, close contact with other patients and, and really uh, just doing everything for physical distancing uh, and, and doing their screening properly. You know, it's a very important thing. Now in medicine, if we're slowly resuming care is to ensure screening and the screening is, is to see if they've ever been in contact with anybody that is right. even under, under suspicion of having COVID or if they have symptoms themselves or certainly fever above 100.4. So that's what we're doing in our practice. Uh, we're limited right now to telehealth and all and more emergent type of consultations, but we're still doing all of that due diligence. And it's important that we keep the patients distant. We have them waiting in their car until we see them and we text them to tell them that we're ready. I, you know, very important question I want to end with here because this is Infertility Awareness Week this week. And so you've got a lot of families, right, who have been planning for months and months and months to begin their family. How do people cope with waiting to get pregnant, right, and now waiting for the offices to reopen? Well, so I'm, I so thank you for asking that. And I'm wearing my orange because it's an ancient color of fertility for National Infertility Awareness Week. Patients who are trying to conceive, this is a nightmare. They have waited to try to get pregnant. You know, when you're trying to conceive, the whole world looks pregnant, and they've waited, and now they've decided to go to a fertility doctor, and now they're being told to put on hold because it's not considered urgent. Fortunately, uh, we may have a precedent. Governor Cuomo in New York uh, just announced that fertility services are essential, and we're, and we're certainly hoping that pervades and we can start offering these patients the treatment that they deserve. They are, uh, it's a, they're one of the unfortunate victims, if you will, of, of this virus that has 
put their plans uh, for their miracle uh, on hold, and, and I empathize with them, and they're having a tough time. This is a very difficult time for everybody. A lot more risks of mental health problems because they're at home. So, so loneliness uh, and, and isolation increases the risk of depression. Oh. So we have to be very conscious about maintaining uh, social media interaction just, just to keep that, yeah. that network uh, alive. So many offshoots of this virus that we don't necessarily uh, think about that are just equally as important. But Dr. Mark Charles, what great information. We appreciate you joining us this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. I'm always available. Have a great day. You do the same. Thank you.